It is a beautiful day outside. So many more things I probably should be doing. One of those days where I just don't want to do it. I feel like making stuff. <laughs> so I thought today would be a good day to make some more bacon cheddar bread. Make a couple of desserts for us for, you know, in my limited freezer space. But I think I'm going to try something new. I found a recipe and actually a YouTube video for crumpets. We're officially going to have to buy new yeast soon too. It's getting low. So same recipe that we always use, top choice white bread from Fleischmann's. Half a cup of warm water, one teaspoon of sugar, and four and a half teaspoons of yeast. It looks bloomed. <laughs> first things first, we've got all of our nice warm milk. So we're going to pour that in. We're going to add the first four cups of flour, two and a half tablespoons of sugar, and two teaspoons of salt. We're also going to put in our bacon. Oh, that looks wonderful. Look at that. There's a lot more bacon this time because I found the last time I made it, I didn't put enough. So this pre-cooked bacon crumbles that you can get just makes this so much easier. All right, I'm gonna set this aside, tidy this up, and then we're gonna move on to the crumpets because I really wanna try these out. So we're gonna make crumpets. Now, the site we're using, it's, it's a site called Pro Food Homemade. So apparently it's a self-taught chef and he was a caterer for what, 35 years, give or take. I'll share the link. The crumpets that he makes are really easy. You just have to have the patience. I have one round mold though, but we'll talk about the molds in a minute. So we're gonna start the crumpet mix and let's see if we can get this to work. All right, so to start, we have 235 milliliters of warm water. We're going to add one teaspoon of yeast and one teaspoon of sugar. And then we'll need to let this sit for 10 minutes. Give it a good stir up. So while this is actually doing its thing, the the flour is actually done by weight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh it out. Same way we've been, you know, doing the veggies. Now it calls for 180 grams of just plain all-purpose flour. So, bowl on the scale, we will zero it out. And we'll measure out 180 grams. There we go, 180 grams of flour. So while we're waiting, Let's talk about molds. Now, he actually has crumpet molds, which all they are is just flat-sided round ring molds, like this guy, okay? Now, one, this isn't big enough, but he is. <laughs> um, I'm not really 100% sure if it's gonna work, but I decided I'm going to use the large mouth canning jar lids. Just put them down. The little lip will be on the top. That's okay. But they're not like eggs, right? They're not going to stick to it. It's just to kind of keep it round. So I'm hoping it's going to work. Apparently you can use anything. And he does have a habit of using shapes for the grandkids. Like he is a teddy bear. <laughs> I have a Dachshund, Dachshund, Wiener Dog whatever you want to call him, because I had a, I had a Datsun for years. His name is Maximus. He was my sweetheart. He's been long gone. So this was actually a gift. <laughs> so I have a wiener dog mold. I'm in Canada. 
So I have a moose and a maple leaf. We have a kitty and we have a butterfly. Now I admit I'm not gonna use these today cause I wanna make sure I know what I'm doing first. So I will use the little ring mold though, just because I have it and I wanna see what the difference is between a flat sided mold and something like, you know, the canning lids. So our yeast has bloomed. So the way it works from here, we add the flour, salt, baking powder, and we start whisking. Okay, so we're gonna add our flour. We need a half a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking powder. So there's two ways to do it. You whisk it for two minutes or you use a beater, like an electric mixer, for just a minute. So I'm gonna mix this up, get it going. Scrape down the sides. Probably should be using a bigger spatula. Oh, well, there we go. Scrape down the sides again. So this needs to sit for 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm gonna get a clean tea towel, cover it up. I'm gonna go put it beside the bread. Well, I changed my mind. I was gonna make two small cakes, but I decided to make one because this is the first time I've actually done this pineapple upside down cake recipe. Normally, we use the pineapple and we use a cake mix. This one's actually homemade. All right. We're gonna do the bottom first. So first things first, guys, we need to melt a third of a cup of butter. So I'm gonna cheat. It's going in the microwave. Okay, so we have to add two thirds of a cup of brown sugar to this butter and mix it all up. So we'll mix all this together. This recipe uses a lot more sugar than, and butter than I'm used to either. So, so we need to reserve about a third of a cup of the juice to make the cake. And of course, in the recipe, it says use the rings of pineapple. I don't have rings of pineapple. I just have the pineapple that we can't. I don't know, is that enough? <laughs> okay, that's probably more than enough pineapple. All right. I'm gonna set this aside and then let's get the actual cake mix made. Now the recipe itself is actually pretty easy. We are going to do three separated eggs. So I gotta put the egg yolks in the bowl. All right, so what it says, we are going to beat them until they are thick and lemon colored. <laughs> All right. All right. Is that lemon colored? I'm gonna guess so. Now we <laughs> gradually add the sugar. I'm gonna scrape it down. All right, so now we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla and a third a cup of that pineapple juice. So we're gonna add a cup of flour, not a lot of flour. Teaspoon of baking powder. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now you're supposed to actually blend all these three together before you put it in, but I didn't. And it says to beat it well, so. I'm gonna go and clean the beaters because now we have to whip egg whites. Clean beaters, clean bowl, egg whites. So those are the three egg whites from the separated eggs. These need to be whipped until steep 
peaks form, which can take a couple of minutes. Well, we're at soft peak, it's almost ready. Check it out, hard peak, see? It stands up all by itself. I mean, you guys should be proud of me. I'm actually following a recipe. Shocking, isn't it? All right, this is where we get to fold the egg whites into the batter. Folding is just not something I'm great at, but let's pop it in. The whole idea is you don't want to lose the air, right? So let's see if I can remember my, uh, you know, high school cooking classes. Through, over, through, over. So basically you're just, yeah, literally folding it in. You don't want to mix it because you don't want to lose all that air that we just put into the egg whites. By the way, the pineapple juice, oh, it smells wonderful, I'm just saying. Well, we didn't lose much air, so that's nice. It's a very light and fluffy batter, look at that. Yeah, so fo folding is just not something I'm good at, but this, I'd say it came out well. All right, let's go get our pineapple. Basically, we're just gonna cover it over and we're gonna bake it at 350 for about 30 to 35 minutes. And we'll see how it comes out. So, time to put the batter in. Wow. All right, I am thoroughly impressed with this batter. I'm thoroughly impressed that I folded it. Okay, in the oven it goes. So can you believe it? I actually followed a recipe. Like perfectly, like really good. But one of the biggest things that I was always told, all the things that I've read is that the beaters need to be clean. If there's any fat, any yolk, anything, the egg whites won't do that. They will not give you those beautiful stiff peaks that you need to be able to put into that cake. So I'm pretty impressed with how that came out. I've never done that recipe before. Same thing as always, I'll uh, link that one below. This website's called Taste of Home. And it looks great, just saying. There's some great recipes on there. I'm actually really, really looking forward to when that's done. And it's the flipping it out part that I'm worried about and nervous about. Now we just have some waiting to do while we bake and we have some crumpets to make here soon once the batter's ready. All right, we're ready. I haven't looked yet. Ooh, it got poofy. So I've got my biggest nonstick frying pan and I'm only gonna put it on about not quite half. We're gonna let that heat up. And now I've got my little rings here. So the way it works is I'll use the little ring that's actually round is we have a mix of butter and olive oil and you have to paint the inside of the ring. And then in the frying pan. But let's see what this mix is like. Oh, wow. Okay, that's nice and fluffy. That's interesting. All right, we're going to try three. So let's get these other rings buttered up. Like I said, this is like all let's see what happens and kind of go from there. Now, it does say to be quite liberal. So let's see what happens. Okay. Three rings. Put some batter in. 
hope this is going to work. Now he says when you put the rings in, they should sizzle. And that's what these bigger ones here are doing. Now these are bigger, so I'll put two spoons in. There we go. Now they have to sit and cook. So they're kind of like pancakes. So you should end up with a bunch of little bubbles and things on the top. Now, when you guys watch the video, he's got like the little temperature thing. He said the pan should be about 350, which is the same as when you're baking. So I'm not sure how it'll work, but here's hoping. All right, let's just let these cook and we'll see what happens. All right. Oh, look at that. The ring came right off. All right, let's do the other one. Hot. Well, oh my goodness. All righty, so it's official. We can use the canning lit rings. This little guy though, he's a little, he's a little tough to get off. The canning rings are actually easier to grab. All right, pop the bubbles. Let's give them a quick flip and make sure we didn't burn them. All right, this makes me happy. Check that out. Give them a little bit of a cook on the other side. Okay. Look at that. I have a crumpet. I don't think I'm gonna put quite as much in this time. Cause those, it did seem like there was too much. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. So we'll do three more. I don't want to crowd the pan because I'm not 100% sure I'm doing it. I don't want to screw it up. How's that sound? Okay. Next three are in. I think we're going to make a teddy bear and a kitty just because we can. Okay, let's pull the rings off. All right, these come off so amazingly easy and that little lip is just perfect. All right, let's try and oil the kitty and the teddy bear. I'm not sure how well I can oil this. Let's find out. One teddy bear and I think we have enough batter for one more ring teddy bear I don't know how the teddy bear is gonna work but this could be interesting okay alrighty let's see how this goes <laughs> the shapes are kind of neat I can see doing these if there's like kids for a party or birthday breakfast, all that kind of stuff. But I'm actually really amazed at how easy it is to get these canning rings up. It doesn't stick at all. It's wonderful. But when you look at them, he's still warm. It doesn't go all the way to the edge. You can kind of see the edge, but yeah, not bad. All right, let's pull this ring off because he's ready. Getting those guys off might be a little tricky. How hot are they? Probably too hot. All right. Woo, those are hot. All right, just a minute. We got this. Ah, oh, the kitty is stuck. Just a minute. <laughs> All right, the shapes are a little tricky. They probably aren't quite ready yet either, to be honest. But the teddy bear, I don't think I actually oiled enough, but that's okay. There he is. Teddy bear! Let's pop the bubbles on these guys to get that whole crumpet 
These guys were a little too thick, but it worked. We have enough batter for two more round ones. Let's get them in and then we're gonna call crumpets a success. <laughs> One really weird looking kitty crumpet. And a teddy bear that looks more like a teddy bear. And while we're waiting for these last two crumpets, our cake is done. Alrighty, those are the last two crumpets. They look good. Look at that. Okay, one batch of crumpets. Ooh, still a little warm. We're gonna let these cool down and then we'll toast one up later and see how they taste. Bread's ready. Wow. Okay. So maybe I'll let it rise a little bit too much. That's okay. Let's put a little bit of flour down. Flour the hands and let's do the fun part. You ready? Ha! Yeah, I know. Little things, right? Little things. Now this is that full recipe. So we're actually gonna get the big loaf pan, but I also prepped my little glass loaf pan too. We'll see if we can get two. But there's a lot more bacon in here this time. Look at that, look at all that bacon. I'm rolling it a little bit thinner than the last time too, because I want more cheese. <laughs> so there's more bacon and more cheese in this one. And this time I'm actually using old cheddar. There we go. A lot of old cheddar. So the first bread pan is this guy. So we'll cut it right about there. But there's our rolls uncooked. Now I got a little bit of cheese left, but I'm just gonna kinda put some across the top of both of them just cause I have some left. But I'm gonna do it before they're risen this time cause the last time I put cheese on top, <laughs> I made the bread fall. I was not happy, just saying. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. It is time to see if this came out. I'm gonna make sure I get all the corners. There we go. Okay. Plate upside down. Doesn't quite fit. Go figure. Are we ready? This ought to be interesting. too hot to try of course now optional in the recipe are maraschino cherries and pecans I have none of that I just have pineapple which is all I need perfect all right we're gonna let this cool we're gonna wait for the bread to rise yeah this makes me happy well, the bread is ready for the oven and it's looking fabulous. Time to bake this off and then see how everything came out. Everything is done. I'm gonna take one of our crumpets, and pop it in the toaster. Okay, so what I did is I cut the cake. I'm not gonna lie, we couldn't wait. So the cake, oh my gosh, the beating of the egg whites and everything, it's like a I don't know. It's almost got the texture of a angel food cake, believe it or not. It is so, so good. The, um, I am gonna really need to get a bigger plate if I'm gonna do stuff like this because the bottom of that plate is so sticky right now. <laughs> but phenomenal, it tasted so good. Just saying. So there's our crumpets. Bring our butter over. Okay. 
Let's see how the bread came out. Yes, I'm slicing it right across the middle. Are we ready? Doesn't that look wonderful? All I can smell is bacon and cheese. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, hide crumpet. Put a little bit of butter because everything's better with butter. Okay, crumpet. So I'm loving how these came out. Now, obviously they're not full of little bubbles and a couple of them are a little fat, but Ooh, little bubbles all the way through. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so the bagels, when I tried to make those and we did all those together, yeah, they taste great. Can't roll them to save my life. Not so bad. Biscuits and pastry, we know I can't make, but that's a skill we're going to have to work on. This, let me set that crumpet down. This guy right here. I mean, it's so spongy. There's a fair amount of sugar, so even though we kind of shared a piece, probably not gonna eat a lot, but that pineapple upside down cake recipe, killer. Oh my gosh, phenomenal. And the crumpets, this is an easy recipe. I didn't know which hand to eat. This is a keeper. Apparently they freeze well. And uh, Freddy can eat his kitty and his teddy bear later on. Alrighty guys, thanks for cooking with me today. I needed a bit of a, a wind down day. So I've got dinner started. We're making basically corned beef hash with a couple of leftover potatoes and a sweet potato. We've got some carrots and broccoli in the oven and some beets that we cooked, lots of veggies. Oh, garden fresh, that's the way to go. Thanks for coming out. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and share away. Go ahead and uh, hit that last video if you wanna see what we did before. Click on Yuki there and go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you next time as we continue on our simpler life here on PEI. Bye for now.